Yes, another day, another preview for the World Cup because that is how I roll. Previews on previews on previews with a career mode and very curious news from around the Russia and a kick-ass vlog being squeezed in there from time to time. And today, we're gonna be talking about some Group D, the group of kind of death because I think it's gonna be kind of hard, especially if Argentina and Croatia underperform and Nigeria and Iceland overperform, which could 100% happen and you know this, so don't argue with me. But just for fun, let's see what I predicted six months ago. Wait, what? Did I forget to take my medication or something? Croatia and last? That is ridiculous. And I wanna to apologize to all my Croatian friends out there. I'm so sorry, that is unacceptable. So we need to completely redo this whole group. We gotta start from scratch. And first up is Argentina, who have to win this tournament if Messi is to cement his status as the best player to have ever been born on this planet, the legit GOAT. <laughs> However, many of you say that we can already say that about him, and I think there's a strong argument to be made in favor of this, but there's also a strong argument to be made about him finding a way to carry his country to a major international trophy before he can get that distinction. Much like Diego Maradona did to help Argentina capture the 1986 World Cup, which is a player, for better or for worse, that Messi will always be compared to until he wins a World Cup of his own. Also, after losing in three consecutive finals, which to refresh your memory was in the World Cup in 2014, I was there, I witnessed it, and in the Copa America in 2015, I was there for that one. And in 2016, I was there for that one too. So maybe I'm the bad luck charm. It's not like Argentina didn't have the opportunity to win something big with Messi in the squad. But sometimes these guys don't show up, which is evidenced by their form in qualifying, which saw them barely book their tickets to Russia on the very last match day, or their 4-2 loss in a friendly to Nigeria right before the World Cup draw. You guys remember that? Or their more recent 6-1 loss to Spain, which proved just how vulnerable and poor they are without Messi in the team. So what I wanna know is, how is their manager, Jorge Sampaioli, going to get this team firing in all cylinders? Is it simply motivating this core of players to understand the magnitude of this potentially being their best chance to win a World Cup since their best player will be 35 in 2022? And if that's the case, then Gonzalo Higuain better f***ing score if they get back to the final this time. And Ever Benega better be balling it out like he was for Sevilla this season and Nicolas Otamendi better defend like he's playing for Manchester City because he seems to become half the player that he normally is when he puts on an Argentina shirt or maybe it's simply the tactics Sampaioli loves to press and keep a high line but you need some quick defenders to execute that plan consistently and Argentina definitely do not have that they're kind of slow in the back. So Sampaioli has readjusted his tactics to play in, and I quote, and this is real, a 2-3-3-2 formation, which I'll be honest, I actually have no problem with it because it'll most likely morph into a 5-3-2 defensively and a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3 offensively. My problem is changing your tactics three weeks before a tournament that happens every four years. That's the motherfucking problem. And I don't care how experienced your players are. Team shape and player movement and knowing where people are going to support each other on both sides of the ball, you can't learn the nuances of that in three weeks. I'm sorry. Also, I'm sorry again for putting Croatia last in my original preview. They have way too much talent to be subjected to my poor decisions. However, they've only won two out of their last nine World Cup games and haven't gotten out of the group stages since finishing third in their first World Cup in 1998. And those are the facts. So my original prediction does have some merit. However, this core of players is by far the most decorated that Croatia has ever had and arguably its most talented, which is proven by the fact, yes, more facts for you, especially the fun ones, that a vast majority of the players play on top clubs where they regularly play in European competitions. Also, as I've mentioned in previews for groups A through C, which is just A, B, and C, this is the last World Cup that this group of players will have together in the prime of their careers so that they can prove something and be remembered for generations and generations. And given my experience, that changes how you approach something of this magnitude. You're hungrier in a way that I can't really explain, but I'll try because I love to talk. And I just feel like you play somewhat free because you know you have nothing to lose. The end of your career is coming whether you like it or not. So you might as well go out there and give it everything that you have so that you have no regrets. And maybe most importantly, I feel like you need to take the time to enjoy just how special this part of your life really is. And all right. This just got a lot deeper than I intended it to be, but going off on meaningful tangents is fun, as was Iceland's run to qualifying for their first ever World Cup. And how was that for a segue? But I'm not so sure it's gonna be as much fun for Iceland when the tournament starts because they're not gonna sneak up on anyone anymore. 
Do you remember at the Euros in France in 2016? They surprisingly got out of their group by finishing one spot higher than the eventual champions Portugal, and then they historically beat England in the round of 16 before getting absolutely steamrolled and outclassed by France 5-2 in the quarterfinals. So as much as I want to throw all of my support behind them because it is super cool to see them at this World Cup and because they wear red, white, and blue like my country, who uh, couldn't qualify despite having a population that is 100 times bigger than Iceland's, I just feel like without the element of surprise, Iceland just isn't as dangerous as they once were. They're a known quantity now, and the other three countries are gonna properly prepare for them, and that could prove pretty difficult, I think, to overcome. But overcoming the odds is something they like to do, and something the Super Eagles of Nigeria will need to do too if they want to survive this group, because as much as I feel like they have the best kits at the World Cup, wearing the freshest gear doesn't mean you automatically get invited to the knockout round party. You gotta earn it. So even though I feel like they should, get invited because have you seen their jerseys? They are fire. And so is their attack, which is not afraid to score goals as evidenced by them putting three goals a game past a very good Algerian Cameroon in qualifying and against Argentina in that infamous friendly where they scored four unanswered goals after giving up the first two. But it's those first two goals that Argentina scored that worry me the most because Nigeria's defense isn't good, either collectively, individually, or even just as a back four. Plus, they have a serious goalkeeper problem. They have no one with any experience. Their best options are hurt, or they recently retired, or they got severely ill, which has left them having to put their faith into Francis Uzoho, who couldn't even start for a team that just got relegated, and that is never a good sign. Which has made my newly minted prediction for this group even easier, and here is what I decided. Argentina is gonna be in first because, despite my concerns, they have Messi, and Messi is gonna make sure they win this group. And then there's Croatia, well, I just want to say that I've seen the light, my Croatian friends, and you guys are going to finish in second. And then Iceland is going to finish in third, but only because Nigeria's goalkeeper issue scares me. Otherwise, I feel like I would have placed them a little bit higher. But both of those countries in third and fourth are going to fight extremely hard and make their countries proud of their performance. I can feel that. I can say that. So that is my prediction for Group D. What is yours? If you pick the right order of finish of all four countries, you will definitely get some warm baller stickers and you could possibly win a t-shirt and a hat too if you're lucky. So make that happen down below and then be on the lookout for Group E because it's coming soon. Later.